All right, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, awesome. Van is, <laughs> yay, can you hear me okay, Amanda? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so thanks to Hannah for asking to hear a, a refresher or a starter course on three act task. Um, I'm super excited to tell you about it. I will tell you that there are six people who went through like a whole course last spring about this, and we have several of them here and there. Um, so we have experts in the school also, not just me and online. Um, before we do that, though, I have to give you like the big idea of where this falls. So I can't just be like, woo, three act task, let's go. You need to know a little bit of background um, about that. So that is that <clears throat> this main idea here of problem solving. We are, have often done teaching for problem solving. This is sort of like the model in the past, okay? Or it might be in the present in some classrooms. The idea being that where we practice a skill and then you get down to the bottom and you do the word problems that apply the skill. That's what we would call teaching for problem solving, which is not ideal. It's, you know, it has a place, but it's not the ideal way to do it. Um, there's also teaching about problem solving, which is learning about problem solving itself. Um, here's one way where you think about like the four steps. There's other ways to do it where, you know, and you can talk about strategies that apply to all kinds of problems, like coming up with a simpler problem or um, drawing it out or acting it out. Those are all, those are things to learn about problem solving. But the, it is ideal to learn through problem solving. In the literature, in the research, this is the most ideal way that we want kids to learn, to learn through problem solving, where they're learning how to do something through actually doing it, not through you handing them all of the strategies and the algorithms and all that ready to go. Um, so to do that, you want to use a worthwhile math task or a rich math task. Those are words that you're going to read they mean the same thing. Worthwhile math task or rich math task are the same thing. And then these are some, real fast, I'm going to run through what, what are some characteristics of a worthwhile math, ta math task or rich math task. Um, I feel like I'm out of breath. Whew, I'm trying to go so fast. So students have no prescribed or memorized rules or methods to solve it. That means that they don't already have these are the steps that I need to do in order to, uh, like, not a set way to do it, okay? If, if, it's, if they already know a set way to do it and you're expecting them to do it in that certain way, that's not a rich math task. That's just practicing. Um, the second, there's not a perception that there's one correct solution method. That's really important. If there's only one way to solve it, that's probably not a rich math task. You want to think about something that they can attack in multiple different ways. That's what we're looking for. Um, high cognitive demand refers to two things in this case. One is um, that, like what we've learned about blooms, right? Analyzing and creating that kind of thing. But also in math that you would match multiple mathematical areas. So maybe it's like multiplication and reading a graph or um, time and addition or something like putting high cognitive demand is when there's more than one math area or realm that you're including in a task. And then context. Um, it's basically not going to be a worthwhile or rich, rich math task if, the, if it's devoid of context, if it's just a problem on the paper. Um, I have to say this week, this came up in our fifth grade pod meeting when we were planning ahead for fraction times a whole number. That's one of the things that fifth graders have to do. Um, so like six times one third. And they were like, yeah, so they have to learn how to do it first and then we'll do word problems. And I was like, no, 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 that's not how it goes. They need to hear a context first, first. They need to hear, I have six friends and they each have half a cookie. How much does everybody have if we put all our cookies together? That's kind of a lame context, but they need some context first to build the idea before you just give them a naked problem. So that's what I mean by context. Okay, so I just want you to grasp, if worthwhile math task is the way we wanna to work towards to teach, and I will not tell you that that's every day we want to do a worthwhile math task. It doesn't have a place every single day. There's, it has a place like in the beginning of your unit and then maybe somewhere in the middle, maybe sometimes at the end. But there's times where you like, have to slow down and figure out what we're talking about and just practice. So don't hear me say this is every day. But this is certainly at the beginning of a new idea or unit. This picture is to help us see that a three-act task comes under that. It's a type of worthwhile math task. It's not the only worthwhile math task or type of task that's available, but it's one that has a very set structure that if you've never done something that would be considered a worthwhile math task, this is a safe place to start because it's already been created. 
there's a, oh, now I do this, and now I do this, and now I do this. So it's sort of a good way to get your feet going in the worthwhile math task area. Yeah, yeah, and and also like there's like a routine to it, okay. so you know like what to, what's coming next. Did you add like something? A, like a framework. Like a framework. Perfect. That's good language. Okay. Are you doing okay? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, okay. So I I know this is hard. This is small, but I want you to grasp that there's lots of different ways to do this. Lots of different ways to deliver it and for them to respond back to you. You can do it face to face, and then they're responding on paper and pencil or big whiteboards. Um, face to face with Desmos, which is what we're going to do today. Because there's so many remote teachers in here, I wanted you to see the Desmos part, but we're going to do it live together. You could do it on. You could do this same kind of thing on Zoom, and then they could respond with Desmos or on Google Slides, or on paper and hold up your paper, whatever. Um, but you can also do it asynchronously, meaning you can assign it and they can do it. I'm not sure. Like you may want to start here. They've never done it before. You might want to start here and do one with together, and then assign one completely on your own. It may be all right. They'd survive if you start here, but you, it'd be awesome to start here, the remote people, and move them towards this one. Okay. So, um, so I just want to give you the big idea of where we're going, of what we're going to accomplish today, which is not too much. We're, we've already accomplished these three things, but I feel like we've really got to experience it as a student before we can really talk about the teacher moves. I think that's really helpful. So we're going to do it as a student together as a group. And then tomorrow, we're going to go back and talk about what are all of the different acts, the parts of it, um, how you can find them. I'll give you a great tool to find them with. We'll talk about how do we pick one and how do we get ready to teach one. We probably won't accomplish this today and tomorrow, um, but I'd be happy to plan a task with you. Um, I'd be happy to talk with you and help you put a task in Desmos. And then if you want to use Desmos, I'm happy to, at a different time, do this, with, like learn how to do it. So I just am saying that because I don't want like Desmos to become our what we're asking all the questions about. I want us to get the teaching first, and then let, I'll help you in a one-on-one -on -one with the Desmos part. Cool? OK. So let's do it. What you need to do is um, there's two ways to get to it. I want us to, to go into a Desmos task. All right, so we're going to do a three-act task. Woo, it's going to be awesome. All right, this first task, we're just going to watch something. And we're, as we watch it, I want you to think about what do you notice and what do you wonder. And then I'm going to ask you to record it. If at, we're going to watch it up here one time on mine. And then you can play it as many times as you want to on your screen. And then I want you to, after we do that, I want you to type in right here what you notice and what you wonder inside this little table. So let's watch it together. So feel free to watch it more times at your seat, but go ahead and take a couple minutes to type right in that box, what do you notice, what do you wonder? All right, so thank you. If you want to keep typing in some, that's OK. But I want to share out some of the ones that, I, that I'm seeing. Um, I'm seeing there are boy and girl options. Um, somebody's wondering, where is this? I'm seeing there are someone notices that there are three sections. And I wonder how many different, let's see what this says. Uh, I wonder how many, no, I can't read it. I wonder how many different something outfits there are, OK? Um, I'm seeing others like there are four different slides. I wonder how many different combinations. How often do, somebody didn't quite finish, that's okay. So all kinds of cool things that we are noticing and wondering. And if you are face to face, you might record this on the board kind of thing. Um, but we'll, we'll keep moving quickly, okay? Um, so now, I'm still, there we go. All right, you should be able to move ahead. Are you able to move ahead? Or move for you? Oh, good. That's what I was hoping would happen. Okay. So 
one of the questions that we saw was how many com different outfit combinations are there? Let's, let's explore that together. That's a good question, that, a good mathematical question that we could explore together. Sorry, I got out of the picture. Um, so the, but, but while we're thinking about it, there were all kinds of questions like, where is this, that kind of thing. Are there any other mathematical questions that we could think about that we could answer possibly about this situation? Take a minute and put at least one other mathematical question right there. And then when you hit submit, you'll be able to see some other people's ideas too. Are you seeing some other people's answers after you hit submit? Cool, okay, great. So next what we're going to do, um, you're going to see in just a minute a place where you can estimate how many different outfits there are possible for, for Zoolander. Um, I'd, when by estimate, we actually mean an estimate, like a quick estimate. I don't mean like, let me scratch down on my paper and figure it out, like a 10 second, 20 second at the most estimate that you have, okay? Then we're also going to ask for a, um, a low, like a, a estimate that you know is too low and an estimate that you know is too high. And I want you to give a brave low and a brave high. So what that means is um, an answer like one outfit, that's not a very brave estimate of a low, or not a very brave low, because you know you could see it more than just one. So get as high as you can possibly with your low, and then get as low as you can possibly with your high. That's kind of a confusing idea. Who can say it a different way for me? Who will repeat the, make a brave low and a brave high? Narrow down your estimate to, to something that's not like the total outlier. Exactly. Yeah, there you go, cool. reasonable. Yeah, realistic, like a million. You can get braver than that. You can bring that high number in further, closer to what it might actually be. Okay, so don't take the time to figure it out. This next slide, I want you to make a quick estimate. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up three more slides. So I want you to work on those, those next three slides on your own. And just keep going until you can't hit next. Okay? Okay, just for a little teacher hat for a second, I want you to see what I'm looking at on my screen. And I can tell where people are based on where your little um, where your blue is, and then this means that you filled something out. So like Liz had to leave early, so that's why hers are all gray because she hasn't done anything. But you've all seen all of those, and then this is where you are, where you're highlighted blue. But right now, I want to talk to you for a second, so I'm going to pause you, and you shouldn't be able to do anything, right? Oh, I know, right? Oh, the power. Okay. Um, so I, I need to pause and say that this, for me, is feeling very different from how a normal three-act task goes, because a big part of a three-act task is the conversations that we're having as we're going. So we're sort of trying to simulate that a little bit by you know, pretending we were all at our different houses and we could see, um, like see sometimes what other people are putting in. The teacher could read them. I'm not as awesome yet at like reading what you're doing and sharing that quickly, but there's a way to do it that I could like put it up on the board and you could see it. But I just want you to know in a in a face to face, this is very much a discourse, people are sharing ideas kind of thing and not like we're all answering our own thing as we go. Follow me? But we're trying to simulate a remote situation too. Okay. So now um, we this is all of the parts of Act One where we've um, noticed and wondered about something that we see, where we have um, narrowed it down to one question that we want to solve. We have estimated. And now we're moving on to figuring out what do you need to know in order to be able to really solve that problem. So instead of typing this one, let's do this one out loud. What are some things that you would need to know in order to be able to get an exact answer for how many outfits there are with Zoolander? Hannah? How many people there are? How many people there are? OK. You want to say any more about that? Because um, that would tell me then how many total shirts and how many total pants were, were available. OK. Are you, did you kind of hear that, or you need me to repeat it? No, I heard that. OK. Anybody else? What else would you like to know? I need to know how many sections there are from top to bottom. OK. She said sections from top to bottom. Anything else? Or is that all you need to know? I was wondering if anything was needed. Ooh, 
Van said, did anything, he's wondering if anything repeated. Okay, that would be helpful, right? Yeah, yeah. OK, so I can share some of that information with you. This is act two, when you share the, a little bit more information that they've asked for. OK, so let me share some more information with you. All right, there you go. So this is, what are we looking at? The people, OK. So now you can, you, you, do you have enough information in order to solve it? You can go ahead and click yes or no there. And then did it ask you to fill out some more information? Yeah. Um, um, let's, let's see. I'm going to go ahead at this point and say let's, t let's use our, we have like almost no time left. Let's use those people that have to go. We can go. Everybody else will try to solve it. Let's do that. Like when you need to go, you go. Okay. Huh? Just to like let them finish solving it. So you, could you solve it at home and then, or no, we can just stop. We'll just stop. So let me tell you the tools and then tomorrow we'll solve it. How about that? Okay. So the tools that are available are Anything you can you want to do on your screen, there, that's fine. There is you can use paper and pencil. There's paper back there, and then I also have some tiles and some um, uh, what are those called? Bottle tops that you can use also. When you get ready to do it, you can get them in a tub if you need to. And then that red basket is for tiles that need to be quarantined when we're done. Um, but our next step that we will do tomorrow. You think I, didn't, I thought you were going on with the computer. We, no. We can solve. I mean, I'm not in charge here. Okay, I think, I think it would help us if we do the solve, like if you can stay, stay and solve it, and then if you guys want to solve it, you know, and bring, bring your solution, that'd be fine. Okay, so let's do that. Take a minute to, or a couple minutes, to figure out how you would figure out the answer to this. How many different outfits are available? Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome. <laughs>